Mr. Emil Short, uh, did Mr. Martin Amidu's resignation come to you as a surprise? It did come as a surprise. It was totally unexpected because, um, you know, there was so much excitement when he was appointed and there was high expectation about his ability and competence to discharge the functions of the office because of his previous activities as citizen vigilante and um, anti-corruption crusader. And um, there was no indication that he was going to resign and so it did come as a surprise. Well, I don't think that it should come to you as a surprise, uh, given that Mr. Martin Amidu wrote several episodes, gave several warnings before finally releasing the bombshell on all of us that he's resigning. If you look at the nine-page response by the office of the president, it shows that from 2018, he was prov provided with adequate budgetary allocation. Um, in 2018, he was given one million and then he was granted commencement authorization to in incur capital expenditure of 2.790 million. But he failed to make a request for payment. Then in 2019, he, submit, he submitted a budget proposal of 360 million, out of which 180 million was approved and appropriated for the office. And the, the office of the president points out that this amount was higher than the budget of some ministries in the current government. They point out that although his office did not apply for release of funds in 2019, the Ministry of Finance released 65.69 million and transferred it into the bank account of his office for operations. Now, only a little of over 5.22 million had been utilized by the office. And according to administrative practice, the unutilized amount should normally go back to chest. But in his case, it did not go back to chest. It was rolled over until the next year. The letter points out that the compensation budget for the office was not utilized because the office was not able to recruit relevant staff by the end of the year. In 2019, financial clearance was given to his office to recruit 249 staff. You know, so as at the end of the year, the staff had not been recruited. And the office of the president is saying that they cannot be held responsible if he failed to recruit the staff. So it seems to me that from what the office of the president's letter is saying, that at every stage, he appears to have not cooperated with all the plans and arrangements which the chief of staff made to give him, you know, the accommodation that he required. Government has issued a nine-page document detailing and explaining that the president, Nagofado, had no hand indeed and did not interfere in the work of Mr. Martin Amidu. Having uh, read that of the president, his response, and that of Mr. Martin Amidu, um, how do you reconcile these two letters? The president letter um, indicates that the only occasion in which M Mr. Martin Amidu could have claimed that he interfered was, in the, was with regard to the HR deal, where Mr. Amidu alleges 
And the president said he should hold on for a week or so. And, and also the president gave him comments from the Ministry of Finance, which initially um, Mr. Amidu reluctantly agreed to get comments from the Ministry of Finance. But when the president handed over the comments to, to him, he refused to accept them. Now, if this is what Mr. Amidu considers as interference, I don't really think that that is the kind of interference which would warrant his resignation. And if I were in his position, uh, given his commitment to the fight against corruption, I would have continued with my work. And if I thought it necessary to investigate the, the um, corruption um, which he said emanated from the HPR report, I would have continued with the investigation of those offenses. Some have said that the creation of the Special Prosecutor's Office is a waste of time and that we need to rather strengthen existing institutions like Shraj, Yoko, and the AG's office. Where do you stand on this matter? Well, in, in the first place, Shraj has no power to prosecute corruption. He can investigate and make recommendations for prosecution, which the Attorney General may or may not accept. Now, the, the rationale behind setting up the office of the special prosecutor by the NPP administration was to avoid the situation where the Attorney General, who is also the Minister of Justice and a member of the government, has to initiate investigation and prosecute members of his or her own government. And that creates a conflict of interest situation and sometimes creates a dilemma for the Attorney General and Minister of Justice. So the idea was that the special prosecutor would be somebody who would not be a member of government, but would be independent. And if you look at the act setting up the office, it states that the special prosecutor will not be subject to the control or influence of any person or authority. And so, even though the special prosecutor has indicated in his letter of resignation that he felt that the president was interfering in his work. This, the act grants him the power to exercise his functions without reference to anybody and in, even if someone else is giving him instructions, he has the power to, re, to ignore those directives and to proceed with his investigation and prosecution. And, in, and for example, in the Ejapa deal, where he said that um, he had um, uncovered instances of corruption or, and corruption-related offenses, and that he had it in mind to conduct the investigation into those offenses. As the government states in the, in the response, nothing stopped him from conducting this investigation and he, if he found sufficient evidence to prosecute whoever was responsible for the criminal offenses of corruption and corruption related offenses. Your name came up um, before the before Martin Amidou was, was appointed special prosecutor as a possible candidate to fill this position. I know you are over 65 years, but um, if the president appoints you as special prosecutor, would you accept the offer? 
<laughs> not at all. I have retired. Moreover, I've passed the retirement age for public service. And um, I'm enjoying my retirement and I'm, I'm, not go I'm not ready to go back into public service. A few names have been mentioned on Ghana web, including Mr. Ernest Abuchi, the former dean of um, the Gimpa Law School, yes. uh, Anna Bosman, who worked with me as deputy commissioner, and then went to the ADB Bank, and is now an ambassador in France. And then um, there's this other gentleman who we he colloquially is called She She. Yes. Akoto um, Ampao. Akoto Ampao. His name has also been mentioned. So, who amongst these people you have mentioned, those prominent persons you mentioned, who could fill the position, uh, who do you think stands out tall? I would reserve my comment or opinion on that issue. Thank you very much, sir, for talking to us. We're grateful. You're welcome.